Hey guys, welcome to your review channel. Today I'm looking at an item from Asus. It's a 40 gigabits per second M.2 NVMe SSD drive enclosure. Now I got this because I got another uh, a new card uh, that you didn't see in my last video. I got this uh, black uh, NS. I think it's a yeah SN770 two terabyte uh, Gen 4 SSD card. We're going to install it in here and see how that works. So if you want to see uh, the unboxing of this, go ahead and take a look at that in the channel. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, but this is the new enclosure I got, and here is the actual SSD. So we're going to install this in a minute. So stay with me. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like this type of video. So what this is, um, and it's been ranked, I guess, number one best new product that they have released on Amazon. And that's uh, so why I purchased this myself, just to be clear and transparent. Uh, they did not send this to me. And if you do purchase it, I do get a small commission and this help support my channel. So I get that out of the way. So this is how it comes in this nice little box. Uh, packaging looks really good. Nice quality boxing. I like that a lot. Um, the enclosures are pretty much all the same. I have a Gen 4 drive. We'll see how it runs. I'm going to run with test on that with Black uh, Black Magic. So take a uh, stick with me with that. Let's do a quick unboxing and see how it comes packaged. Take a look at some of the details of the item. Here's a manual, pretty easy, self-explanatory. A lot of these things are pretty easy. Now this is a toolless system, which means you don't need any screwdrivers or anything to actually install your SSD drive. Take this box at the bottom off. So you do have a, okay, this is a thermal, uh, a nice, tight, heavy quality uh, cable, 100% heavy quality. Uh, this is, yeah, Lightning 4. Okay, so you make sure you, you this, this, now this specific drive, so we can get a close up of that. You can see right there how it's marked on the actual uh, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 4. So make sure uh, this is not backwards compatible. This is only for Thunderbolt 4. So this won't work on any other drive. If you plug it in, it's gonna say not compatible. They have different ones. Probably it's the controllers they use. Uh, maybe it's less expensive to just put a controller and just does one specific task. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, but they, this one here only works with Thunderbolt 4. Just so you know that. So make, make sure you know that. There are different ones that you can purchase with but backwards compatibility and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so so that comes with the cable and a nice quality cable, I must say, in itself. Now, I don't know, I'm sure what this is, it wasn't really clear. I don't know if this is a heat sink or just um, a thing to help hold it down. It's made out of plastic. I guess that could help. Maybe we'll, we'll install that. Comes in a couple plastic little, you know, little rubber hold downs right here. You know how you put them into the, the drive and two sets of thermal pads. Again, wasn't a lot of information on the um, pamphlet about these how to install it and how to put the why is there two of them it was just really just i don't really know so but we'll try to figure it out as we go along so let's take a look at the actual drive itself so it's small okay you can see here how it's um it's got some venting it's made out of aluminum which is really important for heat the dispersion uh, dispersion heat <laughs> distribution uh because you really want to keep it as cool as possible uh during this operation as it's transferring those files because the chipset gets very very hot um so a quick measurement for you just to see how, how much the size of this one is so this one is approximately two inches and by length is four inches and the width is approximately half inch so it's a pretty small drive uh now to open it and this is where you plug in your Thunderbolt 4 right there. You can see that really clearly. There is a light indicator that tells you when it's operating. You can see it actually flicking, so you know it's it's doing its thing. Uh, that's cool. And here is the other side here. This is the open, right? Now, all you have to do is basically just pop it up with your fingers. And that's all you have to do. There's no tools required. Now, the reason why they were able to do that is with a small ball bearings right here. Hopefully, you can see that. Little ball bearings, which is actually very, really cool. Very ingenious. Uh, very well machined very well made uh so I hope we get a shot you can see those ball bearings right there um and uh, all aluminum casing and here is the inside of the actual drive itself you put your uh your, your card right in here slide in here so all this all this stuff here and then you can put different sizes okay so i probably understand now i got it uh the reason why you have this one here I think here is that if you have smaller drives, you need to have this on to have sort of reach to lock down. So that's what this is for. I figured it out on my own. So that's what that's for. That's why they have these different cutouts here, notches. Uh, so you have shorter, just different, just different SSD drives that are available. Uh, so this is probably what that's for. So since we have a full size drive, we don't need this. Uh, so they do give you the two thermal pads. Uh, which I will use. I think I'm going to put one on the bottom and one on the top. There is no explanation. I can't find either way. Do it, don't do it. I don't really think it's going to hurt the drive. I think the more thermal, uh, something you put on the drive, a more thermal you can add to a tape, it could help with distribution of the heat 
that help this you know, heat sinking because if they get really hot, uh, they throttle down, and that's that's the biggest problem right now. Uh, with this new Gen 4 chip, it's supposed to run 20% um, better, uh, not so much cooler, but it's supposed to run more efficiently, I guess, so less power. I guess I don't know. I mean, it, it, they change things every day, as you know, it with all this stuff. So this is what the enclosure looks like. All right, let's install this. Let's install this SSD. So what I'm going to do first, you know, stick with me. So I'm going to do a, a test, and we're going to run that through the. Let's see how fast this drive is here. And we got uh, one of the little rubber stoppers here to put it in. Put that over here, like that. And so I got, like I said, two thermal pads. Now again, I don't know why there's a thin one and a thick one. So maybe two different drives. I don't know honestly. So what I'm going to do, and I'm not sure if it's right or not, but here is the drive itself. I showed this in my last review. Here is the drive. Now the chipset is, is a lot smaller on these new generations. They used to be much bigger. The thermal pad will go on the whole thing. I uh, maybe cut it off, put it on here, whatever. I'm just going to cover the whole thing on one side. I'm going to put the shorter one on the back. Uh, and I know there's not it, there is some heat transfer here. So if you can double side with the heat sink tape, I don't think it's a bad idea personally. I mean, if you think leave us some comments if you think that's wrong. I don't really know. Uh, and it just says here this is a 0 0.05 millimeter, which is the thin one, uh, and we'll just put it on one side. Let's just do that real quick. Let's just take the tape off and just put it on. But I don't mean, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, I, I did get it off. It's, it's so thin that this thermal tape is so thin, it took a while just to get it off. Uh, so now we're just gonna pop it in, and it's always at a, a, an angle uh, when you install these. Here, it's a little small angle, you just pop it right in. It's got that key, so just hit it right there with that. And you can just see how it's just sitting just like that, right? So now what you wanna do is just put on, I'm gonna put the top thermal tape on after I get this installed. And just take this little grommet they give you, a little rubber uh, grommet here. Let's just pop it through here, like that. And this should just maybe it'll just pop right in inside here. It just should just stick right in there and just snap right into place which it did really easily. So that is, hopefully you can see that. Let me turn this around. So you can see that's, that's it. So you got the thermal pad on one side, which I think it's okay. It doesn't hurt it. I mean, anytime you get heat, uh, you know, dispersion or whatever you want to call it, it works fine for me. And then we're going to put the second one on top. And then we're going to close it up, like I showed you, really easy. And then this is a little bit thicker, so maybe this one will work. That was really thin, I think, so that was hot. The reason why it was very difficult to peel it off. This one's coming off easier right now we'll put the thermal pad on top of here make sure we hit all the chips correctly Let's that up okay good so now i got two layers of thermal pad now i'm not sure if that's the right way of doing it or not but i'm going to say it doesn't hurt to add more thermal protection since they give you the tape i can't see why once i close this enclosure on here it's uh it's just going to give it maximum protection and let's see if i can get this one to pull off now so if i've been having trouble with these tabs this one here not so bad. Okay, so this one's working. You can see that how it's just coming right off. And just pull this right off, just like that. And now that is installed. And that's all you have to do. It's really that easy. So the installation of these drives are super easy, not to be afraid. Um, and then you just basically snap on the cover. There we go. All right, now, now that's enclosed and that is installed. That should have full thermal protection. Uh, all right, let's run a test. I'm gonna plug it into my Mac. And um, we'll see how it goes. Hey, guys, if you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It means a lot to me. Please do go ahead and leave some comments down below. That helps the algorithm. That really helps me quite a bit. And that really means a lot to me if you go ahead and do that. And that's all I ask from you is to do that. Subscribe to the channel. It means a lot. And I really do appreciate that. And there will be a link at the uh, at the end of the video over here for this and also down in below in the description. Uh, so go ahead. And if you're interested in purchasing it so far, I mean, I like the build. Let's test it and see how it works. Okay guys, so we're here, we're gonna do a speed test. Here is the drive already set up. I hooked up to Thunderbolt 4. Remember, this one here is the Thunderbolt 4 only. Um, if you plug, plug it into any other drive besides that, it will not read it or recognize it on this specific drive, just so you know. Uh, so I hooked it up, and I went to hook it up to my MacBook Pro, and it was it worked okay, but the speed wasn't as fast as my M1 Mac right here. So we're gonna test it with my M1 Mac. Uh, this is ready to go. Let's do a quick test, again, hooked up. I already set the go, so let's do a test and just see what we got for the read and write. So we got around 26. Um, megabits per second on the read, I mean on the write, and also 25 on the read. So write is 25 and the read is around about 25. 
pretty close. I mean, that, that's not bad for this drive here. It's rated up to 5,300, but you got to remember that's really for installed on a motherboard. Anytime you have an external drive like this here, and you gotta, you gotta have some throttling issues between the cables and the connections, and, and, and it is what it is. And this is the max you're gonna get out of this drive with this specific enclosure. Um, it's getting warm, but not crazy warm. Um, it seems to be working okay. What I do have is a thermal gun, and I'm gonna test how hot this gets uh, over time. Um, we'll just give it a quick test, not too long. Just Let's just run the, uh, the test again, and just see what we're running at for, for heat. And that seems to be the big deal here. Uh, let's see what it's running at, so roughly around 75. And let's just give it a, a minute. It's reading and writing, as you can see right now. Um, so I'm definitely going to recommend this. It's doing what it's supposed to. It's running the write speed is around 2,500, uh, and the read speed is around 2,500. Uh, so that's pretty good. You can't complain. Um, and the temperature is pretty pretty cool. Um, you can see it's around 75, 76 as it gets a little bit warmer. I'm sure if you uh, transfer large files, like really large, like, you know, chunky, chunky files out of the speed test, you'll get you'll get much hotter uh, results out of the out of the, out of the uh, enclosure. But you can see it is warming up a little bit. 76, 77. It's going to right around there. 77 now. So it is warming up. And you can actually feel it to the touch. It's getting warm as it's going towards cycle. 77. So it's, it's pretty decent, 78 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and it will go up a little bit. I don't think it's gonna get too hot, actually. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's actually running pretty pretty cool, literally. Oh, it's running pretty cool. Run. So you can see here when I, race, when I restart it, I'm getting about 2,600 on the uh, on the right. And then the read, it does fluctuate a little bit, which is different. Now, I'm not sure why it's fluctuating, 2,500 in the read, and on the right, it's 2,500. So as it's getting a little bit warmer, you can see it does throttle down just a hair from what it's totally, totally not being used. But all in all, it's performing exactly as I expected. Now it's running around 80 degrees. You can see that the temperature is going up a little bit. And that's to be expected. All right, guys, that's what I have for you. This is just a quick test that you see the enclosure. I'm definitely going to recommend this 100%. It works well. It does exactly as it's stated. Uh, I mean, maybe put a faster chip in there, you know, a faster SSD card. It might go a little bit faster. But this is more than fast enough for me. I think it's cranking along, moving, and no problems transferring large files. Appreciate your time as always. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Leave some comments down below, and I'll see you at the next review. And definitely... Definitely go ahead and purchase this. This is this this is really worth the money. Actually, the probably the least expensive one I saw for Thunderbolt 4 on the price point. So the price point is really good. So go ahead and check that out and appreciate it. And I'll see you at the next review.